Welcome to Nashville, also known as Music City, USA. Yeah, it's not just country around here anymore. Stick around while we take you around Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, y'all, welcome back. I'm Stacy. I'm Tom, and we're RV Texas, y'all. We are native Texans and full-time RVers who are all about exploring the great state of Texas and beyond one campground at a time. We're on a mission to experience life, not just live it, and we're bringing you along for the fun. In 2018, we sold our house, our business, and got rid of most everything we owned to hit the road and see America. Our home is a 33-foot RV named Freedom. We installed an extreme solar and lithium setup, so now we can just about live anywhere with our dog Star and our cat Astro. Every day is a new adventure, so join us as we RV America, y'all. So we just got into Nashville earlier today, part checked into our RV park, which is right up the street. And the first thing the guy tells us is, you need to go have dinner at Cock of the Walk. And I said, the what of the what? <laughs> <laughs> right down the street from the RV park. And there actually, there are like three RV resorts right here all together. This place has been in business, I believe, for 40 years. I think they started in Mississippi. They've been in Nashville, though, I think, like I said, for 40 years. And inside, their walls, when you first walk in, are a who's who of country music that eats here. There's no doubt about it. Oh, my gosh, y'all. They're known for their U.S. farm-raised catfish, so we had to have that. And then we, had, we split an order of that. And then we had a pot of beans and a pot of greens. And it comes with coleslaw and uh, pickled Pick onions and, oh, cornbread. It was awesome. And you can see we have a whole other meal that we're taking home. <laughs> so, highly recommend this place. It is a fantastic experience. Very unique also. Something you got to do when you're here in Nashville. Thank you, Kaylee. So it's our first full day in Nashville and we're staying at the Nashville RV Resort, which apparently has been recently bought by KOA. Um, they're in transition right now, but it's turning out to be a really nice place. We'll tell you more about that towards the end of the video, towards the end of our stay, uh, like we normally do. But we wanted to say we're about to head out and do the first exploring of Nashville and it is over overwhelming. There is so much to do here. There's all types of passes that you can buy that get you into different things and it's just mind-boggling all the options that we have. So we're going to go into town. Uh, there's a farmer's market that's open every day right in the middle of town. It's right next door to the Tennessee Museum, State Museum, which is free. And uh, so I think we're going to start with that and then kind of get a lay of the land and see what happens. And hey, you know what? There's a minor league baseball park in town very close to that as well. So maybe we'll stay in town this evening and catch a game between the Nashville Sounds and the Gwinnett Stripers. We've seen Gwinnett before. We actually saw them play in their home stadium a couple years ago. So that might be fun. Let's just wing it and see what we get. So the first building we walked into here at the Farmer's Market is called Market House. And it's actually like a big food court with about every type of food you can imagine. So very interesting and unexpected. Okay, now during the week, there aren't as many vendors here. They had, although I will say, some incredible produce here. Incredible. We're, we're gonna be doing some other things today, so we can't get any right now. We may come back for that. We did, however, in the other side, there's two different sides. The other side had like vendor booths and we got a bunch of natural soaps, made soaps. Guy was, guy was really nice and uh, 
all natural ingredients so yeah, I'm excited to give these a try there's one bar that we got in or two of them that are soap that's for shampoo never done that gonna try it I don't have much hair to worry about so it it won't be tough on me but for Stacy we'll see if it works out I'm seeing a crazy trend here last summer when we were in Wyoming in Cheyenne we stopped in at the Wyoming State Museum, which was free. Highly recommend, but it was raining on us then. It's not raining on us yet, but it's threatening. We're gonna check out the Tennessee State Museum, which again, is free. This is huge. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so impressive. So this location opened in 2018. Can't wait to see it. So the Tennessee State Museum here in Nashville, oh my gosh, <laughs> totally free, great volunteers. Uh, I can't even tell you uh, how much is in this museum. We spent literally four hours inside and we still didn't see everything. Unbelievable, a lot of little films and interactive exhibits and interesting artifacts and uh, today at 2 o'clock, they actually did a guided tour, which was again totally free, that walked us through for about 45 minutes, giving us the highlights and telling stories. And they do that about, I think, three or four days a week right now. And so, yeah, unbelievable. This is something you've got to do when you're in Nashville. Well, here we go. We're gonna go tour the Capitol building. Nashville is the capital of Tennessee, and the Capitol building you can either take a, during the week, you can take a self-guided tour, or certain hours of the day, they offer a 45 minute uh, guided tour for free. So we're gonna go check it out. So we learned in the Tennessee History Museum that Tennessee was home to three U.S. presidents, Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk, and Andrew Johnson. James K. Polk and his wife are actually entombed here on the Capitol building grounds. So if I seemed a little bit of out of breath just a minute ago at President Polk's tomb, it was because we had already come up a bunch of steps to get here. And I've been counting them and I believe we're about to hit 300. <laughs> Three hundred steps from where we started down near Bicentennial Park up to the entrance. Wow. That's a workout. <laughs> So 
So we're waiting on the guided tour to begin, but as we're waiting, we see this plaque on the wall. They laid the first cornerstone for this Capitol building on July 4th, 1845. Wanted to make sure I had that right. They didn't complete the building until March of 1859. That's quite a construction project, but already I can see why. What's the book you got there? Oh, so they had these here. This is a Tennessee history passport, and it tells you you can get it stamped in four places. I wish we had known about this when we went to the State History Museum, because that is one of the stamps. Uh, Bicentennial Capitol Mall is one of the stamps and uh, the Tennessee State Library and Archives is one of the stamps, but I got my stamp for here. Here's our view from the second floor balcony yes. of the Capitol building. This is crazy, beautiful view. And what you're seeing down there is where we came from before we came to do the Capitol tour. That is Bicentennial Mall State Park, uh, built in 1996 to celebrate the 200 years of Tennessee statehood. We're gonna go more, explore more of that later because uh, Barbara, who was our tour guide here at the Capitol, also was our tour guide at the Texas State Museum the other day. She is fantastic and there is so much more to see down there than we even realize. So we're gonna make our way back down there and uh, see if we can get a better look at some of the things that they've put in. But oh my gosh, this is, this is a great tour, totally free and uh, so many great stories. And by the way, you know, we all grew up in Texas knowing Davy Crockett as a major hero of Texas. He came from Tennessee and he didn't like the name Davy. He went by David Crockett. Uh, he was in the legislature here uh, before he moved to Texas and became a hero at the Alamo. So there's a lot of Tennessee history that coincides with Texas history. And uh, yeah, it is really interesting to see him held in reverence here as much as he is back home. This is Cordell Hull. Now this is a gentleman we had never heard of. He was born here in Tennessee in a small house with dirt floors, didn't know how to read, taught himself how to read, became a leader here in the state, ended up being the founding father of the United Nations. Yeah, the United Nations exists because of Cordell Hull. He ended up winning a Nobel Peace Prize for that accomplishment, and it's quite the inspiration because it just shows you if you really want something and you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. By the way, Nashville wasn't the original um, capital of Tennessee. Like so many other states, Texas included, the capital moved around over the years. And when Nashville was decided, it was in part because the large granite dome that the Capitol building sits on was offered up for the government to build the Capitol building. And yeah, so all of this is a big granite dome. It's kind of amazing. So we've come down to Bicentennial Mall State Park here in Nashville. And right as you're coming down from the Capitol building, you cross under a train bridge and there's a visitor center there. There's information on the rivers. And now we're in the history walk and it starts a billion years ago and walks you through the state's history. Pretty amazing. This wall, there's no way the camera can get it all the way down there. It's probably three football fields long. I mean, it's probably 900 to 1,000 feet long and uh, with dates all the way to the end in order. As we keep going, the dates are going up. So let's see if we can find a little Texas history on this wall, maybe. 
Hmm. Okay, now here on the wall is David Crockett in Texas. We kind of knew him as Davy Crockett, but here they say he wanted to go by David Crockett. Well, he gave his life for Texas in the Alamo. Yeah. They call it Tennessee, they call it the volunteer state, and that I think that's when it started back in those days. A lot of folks from Tennessee went to Texas and helped Texas gain their independence. And yeah, he was one of them and he gave his life for Texas. Well, another great Tennessee volunteer, Sam Houston, who served as governor here in Tennessee. Of course, he went on to be the first president of Texas. And yeah, that ties it back to me because I went to Sam Houston State University that was named after Sam Houston. Yet another awesome Tennessee volunteer. Okay, here they are on the wall. David Crockett, Sam Houston mentioned for their roles in Texas on the Tennessee wall. That's pretty cool. One thing I've been really impressed with in Nashville is its ability to own its history and the willingness to tell the stories, both good and bad, that make uh, really America what it is today. And this wall is a prime example. You gotta do this when you're in Nashville. This park has a lot of different layers to it. You know, there's a section where it's a walk of counties. There's a section with bells that every uh, quarter hour play parts of Tennessee songs. And, and then on the hour, communicate with the bell at the Capitol building. Uh, there is, of course, the history walk. And it's also set up so that landscaping in different parts of the park represents the varying topographies of Tennessee. East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, West Tennessee, all have very distinct um, topographies, they say, and that's what the three stars on the Tennessee flag represent. And this park tries to draw all of that together. Fascinating. Well, we're gonna go on the General Jackson tonight and look who we have! Look who we ran into! Howard and Betty! <laughs> you never know where you they're gonna know. pop up. Yeah! <laughs> Day one of their big trip. So, yeah, we're lucky that we got to meet up with them. For a day. <laughs> For a day. <laughs> a day and a half. A day and a quarter. <laughs> All right, what are we getting? Lava flu. Lava flu. <laughs> I think Howard's getting the lava flu too. Absolutely, wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I like my lava flu. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
today back from the show back from the cruise the showboat showboat and it's a little dark because we're in the parking lot because we wanted to get away from they're still playing music but oh gosh y'all what did you think oh it was tremendous i think we had a great time the the show was much better than oh, we expected oh yeah the, the riverboat tour to downtown nashville was amazing yeah, yeah, I the, agree. The lights, man, just great. What do you think, Betty? Oh my gosh, the show, unbelievable, unbelievable. I was in awe. I just, yeah. I, I mean, it's hard to explain. It was just so amazing. I mean, do we yeah. think it's worth the money? Oh, yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now you can do it a few ways. You can do dinner in a show where you get the riverboat cruise, you get dinner, and you get the show. We opted to do just the cruise and the show so that we ate dinner before we came and that way we were able to spend the entire time outside watching the scenery so i really liked that i did too much better than sitting inside yeah, yeah. but it was oh, thumbs up, for thumbs me. up. two thumbs <laughs> you gotta do the general jackson showboat when you're in nashville 100 yeah. percent. well worth it yeah. yeah yeah two thumbs and two fingers <laughs> <laughs> There, this guy's, this guy's. We're on the Redneck Bus Tour. I'm gonna be fun. The Redneck Tour dropped us off here at the Country Music Hall of Fame. And we have about 20 minutes or so to go in and just kind of maybe visit the gift shop, take a break, get something to drink. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we are right in the middle of town now. I see a sign for the Johnny Cash Museum. Yeah. Excited to be going to a concert tonight at the Opry House. Well, not this Opry House, the former Opry House, the historic Ryman Auditorium downtown, where places, people like Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline and Dolly Parton all performed. But tonight, we're going to see a different act, a different kind of act. Yeah, we're gonna go see Styx in the Ryman Auditorium in downtown Nashville. We're excited because according to the Redneck Comedy Bus, the Ryman Auditorium has the second best acoustics in the world behind just the Mormon Tabernacle. This should be good. So you would never believe it right now as it's warm and sun shining, but it's been raining all morning. It's supposed to be more rain this afternoon. So we were looking for something inside to do. And right down the street from where we're staying is a Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. Now, I don't know the whole history, but I do know that Madame Tussauds lived in the 1700s. She was a real person. She was involved, uh, captured during the French Revolution and forced to make death, death death masks, I think, something like this. But anyway, there are, they have several locations now around the world. This one in Nashville opened in 2017. So we figured we'd go check it out. Yeah, so Marie Tussaud really was a real person in France in the 1700s. She actually started the first museum of hers uh, back in 1835 and this wax museum has been going ever since. This one came to Nashville in 2017. It's the newest of the Marie Tussauds wax museums in the United States. There are 20 something of them around the world and uh, yeah this was awesome. Oh my gosh everything looks so real and lifelike their hands it was amazing and it was very interactive you could pose with them for pictures you could participate it was great and no visit to Nashville is complete especially your first trip without a visit to the main drag in downtown yeah they had every kind of party bus you could even imagine <laughs> if you could load people onto it and it had wheels or could roll in some way down the road, it was a moving party. <laughs> and pulled by just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious watching the folks just drive by. Every time we'd look up, there was some other party bus coming by. 
And they say Nashville is the bachelorette party capital of the world. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we saw no less than 20 bachelorette parties when we were there one day. (laughs) It was hilarious. Now, this is what they call Broadway or Lower Broadway, also called the Honky Tonk Highway or Nash Vegas, and you can see why. Oh my gosh, I think if Las Vegas and New Orleans had a baby, it would be Lower Broadway. <laughs> wow, I mean, it was a crazy atmosphere, and that's that's putting it mildly. Um, I've never seen so much live entertainment in my life. Well, they say here that there are over 32 bars and restaurants. I think that's light. I think there's a lot more than that. A lot of them are owned by country music stars, and they have live music 24-7, 365 days a year, even at the Taco Bell. Yeah, this one blew me away. I had to get this on video. Live music at the Taco Bell. I never (laughs) thought I would see that. But you've got your old favorites like Hard Rock Cafe and so many other options down here. But boy, I tell you, if you're going to go, you might want to go a little early in the day if you really want to eat or be able to go inside and have a table and not have to wait a long time to get it because this is a very popular area. Yeah, but you can hear music just from the street because it's everywhere. The windows are open and it is just so much energy. Yeah, and I just barely captured this, but everybody crosses at the crosswalk at the same time, even diagonally. It's crazy. Welcome to the Shelby Street Bridge. Since 2003, this has been a pedestrian bridge to cross the river here in Nashville. It was the first bridge when it was built in 1909 in North America to be built with concrete trusses. It's pretty neat. So this is the Cumberland River that Nashville was founded on. And this bridge not only has beautiful views, but you guessed it, live music. (laughs) This is Music City. Welcome to our campsite here at Nashville RV Resorts and Cabins. Uh, We are in site 703, which is a full hookup, 30 and 50 amp pull through site on gravel, which pretty much describes, I think, all of the sites here in this park. Now, I wanna say, we said early in the video that we would talk more about this park, and there are some important things to point out here. This is June of 2023 as we are recording this, and honestly, I was a little worried about staying in this park before we got here. Uh, We kind of decided at the last minute to add Nashville into our rotation this year. We were coming here to go to the NIRVC grand opening, which is about 30 minutes from where we are right now. And we decided to come to Nashville itself a few days early to explore the town and bring it to you. But because we decided at the last minute, Nashville can be a tough place to get a spot in uh, kind of last minute sometimes because so many people do want to come here. So we landed here at Nashville RV Resort, and the reason why I was a little concerned is because there were recent reviews that talked about the power being a little unstable, and that's never a fun thing to deal with. I'm happy to report that during our six nights here, not only have we had zero issues with power, it's been very stable and very good, but we've seen park employees actively working to improve the power at the poles on the different sites during our stay here. And that is the story, I think, of this park right now. It's very much in transition. It is uh, rolling into the KOA system. There's a KOA right down the road and the two parks kind of meet in the backs. Uh, and there's a pathway for the employees to go back and forth. So some of the employees that we've seen here during our stay are wearing the yellow KOA shirts and they are actively working on making upgrades to the park right now here at Nashville RV Resort. So it'll be interesting to see where the park goes from here. But the great thing about this location is we're right down the road from Opry, the Grand Ole Opry. We're right down the road from the uh, Wax Museum that we went to and the uh, General Jackson Showboat. So easy to get to from here. And to go downtown, we're about 20 to 30 minutes. 
there is a shuttle because parking and driving in downtown Nashville can be a bear. It is very popular, so a lot of people down there, as you saw from this video. So there is a shuttle bus that you just call and a schedule ahead of time so it knows to stop and pick you up. $10 cash per person to take you from this area into downtown and back again. It's a round trip ticket. Huge bonus to get to visit with our friends Howard and Betty here in Nashville. I'm so glad that worked out kind of at the last minute. Always fun to run into friends on the road and get to spend time. We hope you've enjoyed this video on Nashville. We look forward to coming back in the future and bringing Grammy K. So if you have suggestions on must do's that we missed this time around, make sure you leave them in the comments so we can hit them up next time. And until next time, y'all, safe travels and happy camping. Bye.